Hey friends, so I just got back from work, put all the gears away, and then I reopened some gears and set all these up for today's video. And it turns out to be 4.55 a.m. <laughs> but it's okay, because today we're gonna be talking about four creative lighting techniques for your next photo and video project. I'm not tired. Let's get it. <laughs> The wonders of cinematography is that it's a mixture of two things, artistic vision and technical planning. If you have artistic and creative vision for a film, but then if you don't have the technical plannings to execute and achieve that look, it can get very difficult. But at the same time, you can have a technical theories and plannings only and have absolutely no creative and artistic vision, then it will fail. It's vice versa. It's such a strange thing. It's two things merging into one and blooming into art. <laughs> so last week I actually met up with the spoken word poet and we made a video together. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at four different creative lighting techniques to really help your future projects in photography and videography. And the first technique is using a broken frame. You can go to Walmart or Dollarama and buy a small frame and put a clear tape over it and break into pieces and put it in front of your lens to create a very dreamy look with a very beautiful flare. A lot of the times you have to have a very expensive lens or vintage lens to have a special look. However, with the lenses you have, you can achieve a very special look. And it also creates depth in your video and photos. I just really, really love using this technique. And something about me, I just love breaking things. Just be careful, don't get hurt. Safety first. And the second tip is using haze and fog. Usually we cannot see the light physically with our eyes, but when there's haze or fog, we can see the volume of the light. It actually brings texture and volume into the photos and the videos. Now, this is when you can get really creative. Now that you can see the volume and the shape of your light, you can actually shape it by cutting some of those lights off. You can usually use a foam board or a black curtain or a three x three or four x four solid floppy. In my project, I used two floppies and I cut the light so that there will be a beam of light, a curtain of light coming into it. Because the fog machine that I used created that beautiful light stream when the talent was moving his hands or his head, it was cutting off from wherever he was blocking the light and it just had an amazing look. So next time when you're doing a photo or a video shoot, you can probably use haze or fog to shape the light and cut the light in any way you want. The third technique is using different colors. A lot of the times you can use these LED RGBs. It's very common and you can get it on Amazon. There's different levels of RGB LEDs out there. However, if you don't have the budget for that kind of RGB lights, you can use gels. And the first scene when the light curtain is falling through, I actually used a very expensive production level RGB LED. However, if you don't have the budget like that, you can still get these gels. As you can see, it's blue, red. There are multiple colors. You can get these gels in your local craft store or camera store. You can use whatever light source you have and actually just slap these on and be really creative with it. The amazing thing about gels is that you can actually cross and mix colors with it as well. A lot of the LEDs, unless you have a DMX control or an app control, it's very hard to mix those colors into a one LED panel. However, when you have gels, you can physically modify the light. In my case, I've used four different colors and created a whole nother scene by giving it a completely different look. And don't think that using a gel is some kind of low budget indie film look. Even in very expensive productions, they still use gels. You're not using gels because you don't have the RGB LEDs. You don't need these RGB LEDs if you have gels. So next time, go out and get some gels and be creative with some colors. Step four is contrast. You can actually use contrast in many different ways. A lot of the times, because we're so used to YouTube, we think we always have to light the person. 
However, it's actually very artistic and creative to use shadows, especially the silhouette. Using the contrast creatively can really capture your audience's attention. For the silhouette effect, I actually used a uh, black wrap, other, in other words, cinefoil. Uh, so these are basically tin foils, not made in metal color, but in matte black color. And these are really expensive per roll. I believe that 24 inch by 25 feet is about $70 in Canadian, which is about $50 US. You can use this to shape your, you can use this to make a snoot out of your light source. As you can see, I use these black wrap on my Aperture 120D to make a snoot, to make a little tiny hole to prevent, to prevent, to prevent, to pre to, pre to prevent the lights from spilling everywhere. To prevent the lights from spilling everywhere. And it was really helpful. I wrapped my 120D and shined it directly behind my talent and it created this beautiful, beautiful silhouette. Another way of creatively using contrast is by having full control of your shadows. If you use far side lighting technique, you actually have full control of what's gonna happen in the shadow side where the light isn't shining. You can control the shadow with a foam, black foam board or a white foam board, or you can use a white curtain or a black curtain or a bounce floppy or a solid floppy. In my case, I brought a solid floppy and put it right beside my talent to create a shadow and I adjusted the shadow according to the look that I wanted. So these are the four creative lighting techniques that I used for my project that I did last week. So if you like today's content, please smash that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you won't be missing out on anything. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.